Okay, okay. If you're ever confused on why my videos always state that there's a review, a reaction, and an impression, this comic is the reason why, y'all. After reading this, this is the reason why I give you guys all three. Because if I would have just gave you my immediate reaction to this, I would have thrown the entire issue away. The entire series, I would have been like, no, it's not even worth the read. But on my third read through, I was like, you know what? I got to get more into this, man. And this is issue number four. But without further ado, y'all, it's very rude of me not to introduce myself. Welcome to Reviews from the Six. My name is Cedric, but you can call me Ceddy Said. Welcome all my booktube, booktubers, graphic novel lovers, comic book aficionados. Doesn't matter if it's Image Comics, Boom Comics, Marvel, DC. It doesn't matter. Right here, we discuss it all because it is, it is our interest and our hobby, right? But without further ado... Let's continue with what I was talking about in the beginning of the video. Today, I am reviewing Cutter, and it is issue number four from Image Comics here. As you can see, here is the artwork. I really like it. Go check out Top Cow now, which I haven't, of course. So just like everyone else, whenever I go to a comic book store, the first thing that gets me is the cover. Right. So I saw the cover and I was like, hmm, I'm kind of interested. Plus, there was a sale going on. It was like one for 10. Boom. Got to get it right. But anyways, let's get to the story. So when it comes to Cutter, I knew nothing about it. And because of the shattered glass and, you know, she kind of looks like a ghost a little bit. I was like, maybe it has to do with like a 13 ghost type series, you know, like the movie. I was like, maybe it's like that. Right. Maybe it's a ghost that comes back and it just wreaks revenge. OK, I'm kind of intrigued. Let me see what it's all about. So, like I said, my first read through, I was like, nah, I don't like it. Just throw it away. However, I actually took my time to understand it. Now, the story really doesn't get muddled, but I pick up on issue four. So, of course, the issue starts with uh, a man by the name of Jeremy. He's in jail. And as he's in jail, a pregnant woman comes up and she visits him. And she's like, you know what? Um, the sheriff is kind of like, we don't let people come in here to, to visit anyone under these circumstances. Fortunately, we know you, we know him. Go ahead. Let it happen. Right. So Jeremy's in there and he's telling his wife, Hey, I had nothing to do with this. I did not kill that man. I promise you, but I'm going to show everybody that I'm innocent and that I'm free. Right. So she's like, yeah, you don't have to tell me that. I totally believe you, whatever, whatever. So he's telling the wife, hey, get out of town. You're pregnant. Go to your mom's. Let me take care of everything that's in town. So she's like, no, I'm not going to do that. I want to stand by your side. Of course, he not pressured her, but, you know, gave her that little nudge. Hey, you got the baby. I'm going to be all right. Just make sure you're going to be all right. Go to safety. So when I leave here and take care of everything, we can start a new life somewhere else. And I always know that you're safe. Right. So she goes, OK, bet I'll do that. Well, it cuts to a scene to where, you know, he's sleep and he's tossing and turning and he's making all these noises. Ugh, uh, uh. I'm assuming it's a nightmare, but it's really not a nightmare. Right. So when he turns over and he looks at his hands, his hands are just full of blood, covered in blood. So he's freaking out now. Oh, my God, what's going on? He looks over in the jail cell. The door is opened. So he's like, what? What's going on? He steps out into the hallway and he just sees the hallway full of bodies yes full of bodies everybody in the sheriff office or in in the jail was murdered every single officer every single sheriff it doesn't really show how but assuming that the comic is called cutter i'm assuming that he used something to slice all their throats and their wrists and all that good stuff right so as he does that, he's walking around the station and he gets to the, the locker room and he sees there's a uh, sheriff uniform and a set of keys. Boom. Throwing the sheriff uniforms, grabs the keys, hops in the vehicle. Now, this is where it kind of gets muddled for me a little bit. And maybe I need to pick up on like issue one and kind of read one, two and three. But anyways, he goes to the psych ward. Uh, he goes to the psych ward. He gets the files. He tells a young lady, Hey, I'm sorry. No one told you I was coming. However, I'm here. I just need to see these files. She was like, Oh, it's okay. Sheriff. I think he used an excuse. Like there was an emergency that happened at the station or something like that. Right. Uh, telling her hey, everybody's dead, but you don't need to know that. Just give me the file. So he gets the file. And as he's going through the file, um, he notices that there's a big gap missing. So it's showing like a couple dates and on a few of those, on a few of those dates, like I said, he noticed that the page is missing. So with the page being missing, 
he goes, hey, yo, where's these pages at? Like, you need to tell me what's going on here. So she's like, I don't know, but I can have someone look into it and tell you exactly, you know, what happened to the missing files. So she goes, oh, well, you must have heard that her sister just checked in. And he's like, what, excuse me? He was like, yeah, the sister of the profile that you're reading is checked in. You want to go check in on her? He's like, yeah, sure. So I do have to look at my notes here. I believe the name uh, is Abby. So Abby, Abby is the one that's checked in. Emily is the one that he's getting the file on, right? So he goes, okay, cool. Let me meet with Abby. He meets with Abby. He's talking to her and she's like, you know, you could have done more than what you did that night. And he's like, yo, like, like, what are you talking about? She goes, you know what you did. So I'm assuming in the other issues, they already talk about the sister, right? So now they're talking about the sister, Emily. So long story short, he's kind of confused. He's like, yo, I really don't remember much. I feel bad. I do remember the night we tied her to a tree and that was it. You know, um, I believe the other character name is Carl. Carl was drunk and his father is the preacher or the uh, I don't know if he was the preacher or if he was a sheriff. And she was like, he was like, you know who, who, who that that man's father is. So why would I even do anything? I just threw it behind the back of my mind and let it go. So she kind of takes him down memory lane. Right. She's like, yo, all y'all about to get what y'all deserve. All y'all about to get to smoke. All y'all about to get to work, right? So she takes him down memory lane. He's jogging his memory. And like I said, all he remembers is that they tied her to a tree. Um, Car was super drunk and they were scared to do anything because he was a son of someone in power. However, um, okay, I'm going a little ahead of myself. We'll get there, right? So he's trying to jog his memory. He really can't remember. So the sister is like, y'all gonna pay for it. And she goes, she said something like, you need to go check on your friend Carl right now, or you need to go check on your wife. One of the two. I kind of forget which one she says. But anyways, it cuts to a scene. Now, remember, I told you that all he remembers is that he tied the sister to a tree, Emily to a tree. Well, when he gets in the uh, he pulls up to the scene in the, the, the cop car, right? The cop car that he took, he pulls up to the scene. Boom, he sees Carl tied to a tree. Now, before he sees that, there's all your dialogue going on with Emily and uh, Carl. So it's Carl tied to the tree. And Emily's telling him everything like, yeah, you got me drunk. You roofied me. You raped me. You know, and then that's where it gets real, right? Because you kind of know what happens without n them telling you what, what goes on. But at the same time, too, you're kind of like, OK, I just need them to confirm it. So they do confirm it that, that it was rape that happened. So long story short, she has these seers, right? So she's getting ready to go cut off his head. Uh, oh boy, Jeremy is like talking to her or whatever, whatever. She engages in a dialogue, but she still whap, whap, chops him up, right? Kills uh, Carl for raping her. So now a fight ensues with Emily and, uh, and Jeremy. Now here's the twist, right? Like I didn't expect this, this I didn't expect this to happen. And this is what I want to know more about. So long story short, he goes, look, Emily, I know it's not you. I know you're her daughter, Jane, right? So Jane is like, yeah, how'd you know it was me? My mother lives inside of me. My mother's a ghost. We can't die. She goes into this whole diatribe, right? So like I said, a fight ensues. She, in the comic here, it looks like, I'll show y'all a couple of the pages real quick. You know, a little bit of the art. Sorry about that, y'all. You ain't gonna see a whole lot. But I think this is it, actually. Yeah, right here. Divine Intervention goes right to the page. She cuts him. So it looks like she cuts his arm off, but she doesn't cut his arm off. She just cuts him, right? So as the fight ensues, she cuts him. He grabs a knife. He stabs her. Or no, he doesn't stab her. He cuts her across the body. But she doesn't die. She takes the Sears back. She stabs him. Hey! She goes, I'm a ghost. I told you I can't die. My mother lives inside of me. She says something to the effect of I'm going to go say hi to your wife or, you know, give your goodbyes to your wife. Right. Then it cuts to another scene. The scene cuts to him being in the hospital bed. Right. He's laying in the hospital bed. He's all bandaged up, jumps up. Where's my wife? But there's two detectives there. And the detectives are like, yo. Don't worry. She's good. She's fine. Everything is taken care of. But you need to tell us what was your involvement in this case with Emily. You know what I mean? 
And then that's where it gets real. So, you know, they question him. He's pretty much under the impression I'm thinking that he's going to go to jail for what happened a long time ago. He goes into the bathroom. He punches the mirror in a rage. Boom. Picks up a shard. Cuts his wrist. Whoosh, slits his wrist, y'all. While he slits his wrist, he has a vision or like a, a memory. And he's looking out the window. And it's two kids bullying another kid talking about, you know, I bet you don't even like girls. I bet he's gay, you know, going along those lines of that. And at that moment, they're like, what are you going to do? And he says something like, you want to find out? And then it's to be continued. And at that point, I was like, yo, I got to read more of these. Like I said, this is the reason why I give you a review, an impression, a recap, whatever it is, reaction, whatever, just because I go through so many different emotions and thoughts while I'm reading these books. But yeah, if you made it this far, you already know what to do. Your vibe attracts your tribe. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. If you don't hit the like button, YouTube algorithm is going to be like, hey, no one's messing with this video said, sorry, you know, and they won't show everybody my stuff. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you can stay updated on all new content that gets released. Also, make sure you share this video to any and all social media platforms, especially someone that you think this video could be beneficial to. With that being said, peace, love, and blessings.